HR Conference 2014 will be open now with the keynote speech by Senior Professor HHD and PO Pathak. Senior Professor Opatha completed his BSc in Business Administration Special Degree and MSc in Business Administration HRM from the University of Sri Jayavadanapura, MBA from the University of Birmingham, United Kingdom, Diploma in Personnel Management and Industrial Relations from Cambridge International College, United Kingdom, PhD in HRM from University Atara, Malaysia and Doctorate in HRM from Irish International University. Senior Professor Upathal is Honorary Member of Institute of Personnel Management Sri Lanka and awarded the IPM Gold Medal for the Most Outstanding HR Professional of the Year 2010 which is Once in a Lifetime Award. And he is awarded the Pride of HR Profession Global Award by World HRD Congress 2010. Same year, Senior Professor Pathal is awarded the title of Certified Doctor of Business Administration by the Oxford Association of Management, Oxford, England, 2010. And he was awarded the Award of Honor at the 8th International Conference of Management and Finance 2013 by Faculty of Management and Finance, University of Colombo. And I'm pleased to announce that he belongs to the award of the Great Man Felicitation in year 2013 for teaching to a large number of Sri Lankan university students for more than 25 years without leaving the motherland conferred by Sri Jayavadanapura University Business Administration Graduated Foundation. And ladies and gentlemen, he is the author of the first single medium book on HRM and the author of the first English medium textbook on HRM in Sri Lanka. He is a renowned researcher, a book writer and a consultant to various organizations. Senior Professor HSG and P.O. Pathal, I now invite you on stage to deliver the keynote speech. The topic of the speech is Research Culture. Professor Yudi Kisman, <coughs> keynote speaker for the part one of today's event. Professor Hemant Akotavattagi, the head of the department. Professor Allen, Dr. Vatra, Professor Rohini, and all other distinguished academics. And also distinguished uh, invited professionals and dear students. So in fact, <coughs> uh, in fact, I asked Professor Hemant uh, to do, <coughs> to invite another person to do uh, this session, but really he wanted me to deliver a keynote speech on an unusual topic of discussion that is uh, research culture which is not a general topic of discussion uh, luckily uh, there are a few academics hopefully this speech uh, may be useful for them and <coughs> uh, my dear students normally I am a teacher teaching several courses so then it's not a new thing. Uh, right. So the research culture. So what is research culture? Simply, I have defined research culture as a set of shared belief, values and norms in respect of development of research. So this is about developing research. Doing research, creating research, developing research. So that because this is a culture, which is an abstract construct, which is an usually intangible thing, not a tangible thing, 
So it has basically three elements. Beliefs. Beliefs. So the I <coughs> define beliefs here as assertions taken as true or the uh, convictions. So I have given several beliefs. So like doing research is an essential duty. Without research there is no creation of knowledge. Academic life is composed of research. Experience in doing research results in high quality teaching. So these are some beliefs coming under research culture. And then values. They are basically guiding principles or desires the states that we seek. So such as good quality research, educate validity and reliability of measures that we used uh, to measure various phenomena in HRA. And trustworthiness, high trustworthiness of uh, qualitative inquiry. Also considerable academic and empirical significance. Also adhering to ethics. So these are some uh, desires and states that we see under research culture. Then the third uh, characteristic or dimension of research culture is norms. So here I define norms as expectations for behavior or acceptable standards of behavior. So such as conducting at least one research systematically or scientifically per year, then publishing at least one research in a recognized journal per year, and presenting findings of research before a recognized forum, like these are some expected behaviors. So then, why is a research culture important? So there are many reasons, our time is limited. Uh, here it reminds me about a very <coughs> well-known Pali tenet, Vidya Upatatan Setta or Upatan Setta. In other words, so of things that arise, knowledge is the greatest. So it's one of the most popular statements relevant to our university, University of Sri Lanka. The university of Sri So hence the need of creating storing and disseminating knowledge is of utmost importance. So because of research culture, so we can indeed create, store and disseminate knowledge. Also, these are some reasons, you know, why should we do HRM research? So five reasons have been given. So by understanding these five reasons, so we will be able to understand the importance of research culture. Find out the truth that is hidden, oh, which has not yet been discovered. So in relation to aspects of HRA, to expand the existing body of knowledge, to understand the basic everyday phenomena which need to be handled in managing people at work. So also to provide a good basis for right decision making in HRA. Also, of course, to uh, seek and generate empirical support to a theory of HRA. So the research culture is indeed important because it affects feelings of academics, thoughts of academics, actions, behaviors of academics. Not only academics, also the other people who are influenced by academics. Also, it has a direct impact on academic employees' job performance. Likewise, there are many reasons which will highlight the importance of research culture. Also, I would like to mention some specific four functions which are provided by research culture. For the first time, research culture provides a sense of identity for people like us. Also, it reminds people like us, so all the people concerned, 
about our university's strategic needs such as vision, mission and strategic goals. Also, it specifies and reinforces acceptable behavior of academics and the relevant people on the academic arena. Okay, then. <clears throat> So another new concept can be derived from the discussion, from this presentation. Employee research for formal knowledge. So every academic has an aspect of job performance that is called employee research for formal knowledge. So if you have a serious look at this figure. This one. So I view uh, research competencies and research attitude as employee research inputs. Then I view so these inputs you know will lead to research behavior and research results, which are labeled by me as employee research performance object. Then these things you know will lead to research organizational performance or research university or department performance which will of course uh, result in creating and enhancing research culture. So finally, I would like to mention some strategies from the point of a chart towards creating and enhancing the research culture. First one, to commence around research degrees so that you impart right knowledge in this case about research. So of course, this will, uh, this will deal with my first uh, human resource requirement, research human resource requirement, that is in chart competencies. Then to evaluate academics job performance according to research related criteria. Not only teaching related criteria, research related criteria. So, in fact, sorry to say that we have a rigorous performance evaluation scheme that will really cover research related criteria. But luckily, <coughs> we have a very good scheme for promoting people to the post of professor that will really consider these research related things. Then, to give financial incentives to academic employees for their good research performance objectives. Of course, Sri Lankan government has decided, of course it is giving something called research allows. Of course, that had a tremendous impact on improving number of research papers and also conferences. Now you can see everywhere in Sri Lanka, almost every university conducts annually research conferences, also symposiums, which we did not have many years ago, when we were, when I was young, Then to give non-financial rewards, such as spaces and recognitions to academic employees for their research. Then to organize and conduct continuous research events like this. So all the actions that we can do to show high level of research organization and citizenship behavior. Then the other one is research interpersonal citizenship behavior. This is the degree to which the relevant research of the academic member engages in voluntary positive actions aim at helping co-workers, even I can include now, all other, any other, not only co-workers, so any other people who are interested in doing research. So these are also not paid, these actions. They are also voluntary things. So such as these three things. Stimulate others to become researchers. Ask questions asked, answer questions asked by researchers. Then teach others about how to do research. Then the third uh, thing coming under 
research official behavior. So of course, this is the extent to which the relevant member engaged in official duties assigned by the head of the department or assigned by the certain superior regarding research. So these are paid. The salary is uh, given to an academic member because of engaging these things, such as teaching research courses, doing research supervision of your students assigned by the head of the department. So, like. so then, <clears throat> my fourth uh, element or the fourth thing, the research results. Fourth, research human resource requirement, research results. Basically, they are, there are two, research innovations and research outcomes. Research innovations and research outcomes. So under research innovation, I mean new things for conducting research. New scheme for evaluation of research work. New things uh, for, you know, enhancing the quality of research supervision. Uh, this I put under this label, research innovations. Of course, research outcomes, there are so many things. Number of research studies done, number of uh, research-based books published, the number of hours of research supervision, number of research abstracts published, like these you know, things. So if I use my word <coughs> presentation, So these are the three dimensions of research culture. Four specific functions of research culture. And of course, research human resource requirements. Research competencies, research attitude, research behavior, and research resource. So this is an illustration of right attitude. Okay then. <clears throat> so another new concept can be derived from this discussion, from this presentation. Employee research performance of job. So every academic has an aspect of job performance that is called employee research performance of job. So if you have a serious look at this figure, this one. So I view uh, research competencies and research attitude as employee research inputs. Then I view, so these inputs, you know, will lead to research behavior and research results, which are labeled by me as employee research performance of job. Then these things, you know, will lead to research organizational performance or research university or department performance, which will, of course, uh, result in creating and enhancing research culture. So finally, I would like to mention some strategies from the point of HR towards creating and enhancing a research culture. First one, to commence and run research degrees so that will impart right knowledge and skills about research. Of course, this will, uh, this will deal with my first uh, human resource requirement, research human resource requirement, that is HR competencies. Then to evaluate academics job performance according to research related criteria. Not only teaching related criteria, research related criteria. So in fact, sorry to say that we have not a rigorous uh, performance evaluation scheme that will really cover research related criteria. But luckily, <coughs> we have a very good scheme 
for promoting people to the post of professor that will really consider these research related things. Then to give financial incentives to academic employees for their good research performance of job. Of course, Sri Lankan government has decided, of course it is giving something called research allowance. Of course, that had a tremendous impact on improving number of research papers and also conferences. Now you can see everywhere in Sri Lanka, almost every university conducts annually research conferences, also symposiums, which we did not have many years ago when we were, when I was a young academic. Then to give non-financial rewards, such as praises and recognitions to academic employees for their researching. Then to organize and conduct continuously research events like this. So I have to thank especially Professor Yamanta, who is the key person for organizing this event. Then to create opportunities and provide facilities to publish research works in academic journals and as exclusive books. To conduct various research workshops to impart latest knowledge and skills in research methodology. For example, when it comes to hypothetical deductive approach using scientific method, so now there are certain new statistical packages developed. So even relevant to quantitative, qualitative studies, there are some statistical packages or some packages developed. So normally many academics are aware about these things. So this will really make that awareness. So finally, may we be able to enhance our research culture. So I wish you a better future. Thank you.